All right, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, jumping in on this Friday night. It is party night, I guess. April 30th, 2021 is the date, 8.20 p.m. West Coast time. Here in California, just landed about an hour and a half ago, right about the time a pretty good-sized earthquake struck off the coast of Japan, a 6.8 magnitude earthquake, to be exact. Go ahead and check some of this info out on the USGS map here. Um... We've been watching this area for quite some time. If you've been watching my videos, update videos, uh, I've been mentioning about the lack of activity. In fact, Missy Mimi's has been mentioning this too. I think a lot of folks have been wondering what's going on up here because we don't see uh, the quiet spell that we have been seeing for quite some time in this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Normally, it's pretty active in this area. Uh, Japan Trench all the way up through, uh, up towards the Aleutian Islands, pretty active, should be anyway. So the lack of activity was kind of concerning. I mentioned possible uh, that we could see at least a 7.0 in this area, just due to the all the plate dynamics that have been taking place, the pressure, the resistance building up here. Um, just, it was strange. That's all I'm gonna say. So anyway, we did see a little bit of release of pressure, 6.8 at 47 kilometers below surface. So a little bit inland, okay? A little bit inland along the Japan Trench area. Now, I can't rule out a possibility that this could be something um, kind of like a foreshock, if you will, to something bigger. Because uh, I still think there's quite a bit of pressure built up here in this region um, over the last few weeks. A 6.8, you know, it's, it's a good sized quake, there's no doubt. But there's always that possibility, and I think the possibility is a little bit higher uh, that we could see, uh, you know, something a little bit uh, higher in the magnitude department. Or potentially uh, at least a 7.0 uh, within the vicinity of this area right here. I just, I. I see it. It, it. it seems like it needs to happen <laughs> to get things back in order. Uh, so yeah, pretty good sized quake right there. I seen that come in on my phone just as I landed in Sacramento. And um, yeah, 6.8, 47.3 kilometers below surface. I don't believe there's any tsunami threat with this. Too deep, um, too, um, the magnitude is just not there. Looks like originally a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake, uh, according to these folks. Let's go ahead and check this out here. Uh, no tsunami threat, but I always do like to check those out, see what they say. So yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. I'm wondering how this is going to affect the West Coast now. If you look at the activity, well, this is over the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. We need to go to the all magnitudes to take a, a little bit closer look. It looks as though you know, things. Uh, I've always thought that things will calm down a little bit here along the West Coast. They've been pretty active uh, all up and down the North American continent, inland into the North American continent. Uh, talking right around the Craton, the North American Craton area. Areas just east of the Rocky Mountains where they built up over eons. Um, and the tremor, the tremor uh, should be affected with the 6.8, meaning that we should see a release, a uh, little back backing off so to speak of the trimmer along the cascadia subduction zone we'll see though um we'll check that map out here in just a second but the the rest of the earthquake activity uh looks like there was a couple let's see when this took place here yeah look at that do you guys see that so this here is a little concerning i didn't see this earlier there was two four shocks to this 6.8 so to speak but deep really extremely deep for this area um, there was that 4.4 that struck a little bit a couple hours you know uh, okay a few hours prior to this 6.8 at 387 kilometers south just south off the coast of Japan right there and then moving up just about an hour it looks like an hour and a half prior to the 6.8 there was another deep earthquake at 141 kilometers of 4.5 north uh, into Japan, but inland, right? You got to think of inland, uh, down dip downstream to Japan trench area subduction zone. That's why we're seeing that the deeper earthquake activity. So ultimately, um, I believe, I don't know, man. I, I still think that the... I still think that we should see a little bit further release of pressure here in this region of 40, 
47 kilometers is still kind of deep for this region. It's very possible, folks, that, you know, that we could see some release of pressure on the higher magnitude up here towards the surface area. But those deep earthquakes are a little concerning. But uh, no doubt, definitely four shocks. Um, I, I just don't think... A couple days ago, there, there was a few fours in this area. Uh, but not as deep as what we're seeing right now uh, or prior to this 6.8. And so far, and this is the other concerning thing, is we have not seen any aftershocks, at least according to the USGS. So let's go ahead and check out the EMSC, web, um, EMSC website. CSEM, European model. See what these guys are saying about any type of, well, aftershock activity. There's their 6.8. I do not see anything. There is no aftershock activity following this 6.8. And that's, that's, you put together the deep earthquake activity, right? It's super deep. Even the main quake. Well, I don't know if it's a main quake yet or not, but the 6.8, somewhat deep as well into the Japan Trench subduction zone. And then you mix in the lack of aftershock activity for such a large earthquake. Where is it? It's not there. So that kind of backs up my belief that something bigger is or should be happening here really soon. Uh, I just don't believe that's enough pressure that has been released. Lack of aftershocks kind of um, showing that. So let's move on, take a look at the uh, rest of the region here throughout the Indonesia area. I'm a little hungry, folks. I mean, sitting at the airports all day, I had to catch a couple uh, connect connection flights out of Texas. And airport food is not the best. So I'm going to get me something to eat here real soon, right after this update. Uh, Alaska, things calming down up there. Let's check out the West Coast real quick. Um, not a whole lot of red circles indicating the recent earthquake activity within the last hour. There's only a couple up here by the geysers, right? And a little bit of activity in Ridgecrest and a little small microquake along the El Ellensnor Fault. Uh, looks like the uh, Temecula section, a little small microquake. But overall, it looks like we're looking at a little dwindling of activity. But, um, you know, it's we got to watch this area over here to ultimately get a sense of what, what should happen or what is possibly going to happen over here along the West Coast. Um, and many geologists and whatnot, they say that whenever we see significant movement over here in this area, of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire, it does add a little release of pressure along the West Coast, just like that nine pointer did a few years ago. There's talk of, about how that may have relieved pressure along the West Coast uh, from, from the big one happening, but you know, just due to the, the massive amount of uh, land shift over here. So today, it just looks, uh, today it looks like any average earthquake activity day in California. Intermountain West region, things calming down, it looks like. Uh, to even Texas region seeing a little less activity than what we've seen <coughs> excuse me, um, yesterday and the day before. Uh, moving down to South America area, we're looking at some more deep earthquake activity. 37 kilometers there for that 4.6. The big one, not a big earthquake, but super deep, 248 kilometers for that 4.7. See if I can find some water. Like I say, I just got home a short time ago, a few minutes. Oh, okay, I'm better. So yeah, deep movement continues here along the uh, Peru Chile Trench, down dip downstream. We talked about all the deep earthquake activity over the last couple days. <clears throat> um, so. You know, is this a temporary band-aid? You know, is this 6.8 a temporary stall in the uh, in the plate dynamics along the West Coast? I, it's possible. Um, but I would watch this area very closely for more significant movement. And I'm talking about this area pretty much <coughs> right about here. Right about where this other deep earthquake struck this 387 kilometers to the north in this little section right here. 
this trench area, Japan Trench, the Corral. Uh, Man, I, I don't. I know how to pronounce that. Um, Kamcha, Kamchatka, Kamchatka. Is that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe we got it right. If I didn't, I will be corrected. There's no doubt about that. Um, so yeah, this area is still kind of. We need to watch, folks. Uh, 6.8. Good size quake, but where's the aftershocks? What's going on? Something's not right here with that picture. Um, Hawaii, let's go ahead and check that out real quick. Uh, looks like a little swarming, of course, down on the southeast flank. Other than that, not a whole lot of movement, folks. I want to show you guys the trimmer department. This is from today, 4.30, April 30th. Uh, looking at uh, 485 epicenters of trimmer. Right smack dab in the same area that we've seen for about two weeks now. This area has been in... Uh, trimmer is, is a... Uh, it's not like a sudden movement of land more or less it's like a slow motion rubbing against of the plates there the Juan de Fuca plate subducting right subducting underneath the North American plate that's that's what we're getting there we're getting those vibrations if you will trimmer that's being picked up by super sensitive equipment they do assign a magnitude over here to them uh, M energy release uh, and if you were to look at these most of these are obviously microquakes but it's been going on here for two weeks now in the same confined area okay we'll see what this and even in the northern california it looks like today but we'll see what the 6.8 does depending there's not a larger earthquake between now and tomorrow night when we check this trimmer map when it comes out uh, i'm curious to see if it released the amount of pressure that's been built up out here along the west coast if you notice we haven't seen any more let me back out of here a little bit. Oh, man, thank God for fast internet. Boy, did I miss my internet. Uh, we haven't seen too much movement out here along the Blanco Fracture Zone, right? Remember all those swarms of uh, fives that were kicking off out here off the coast of uh, uh, Oregon and whatnot? The only earthquake is at 1.9 at 21 kilometers. That's kind of deep. We have seen some deep movement down here. We're watching that pretty closely. Of course, with the trimmer, right, all that trimmer movement, the land, or the plate, so to speak, is moving, subducting underneath the North American plate. So ultimately, you're getting back buildup of pressure along not only the Cascadia subduction zone, but other areas around it, uh, and more specifically to the south. Up here to the north, there's been a little bit of movement, but that's way up there, way up there. Uh, but definitely, uh, over the next 24 hours, is something to watch pretty closely, folks, that's for sure. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. I don't believe we've seen any earthquake activity. There is that 6.8 that showed up. Let's see what's going on there on this seismograph station. A little bit of, uh, you guys see all those spikes right there? Looks like there's quite a few, uh, quite a few measurements there being picked up in Yellowstone prior to and after that 6.8. Now, th those are not big earthquakes. Uh, looks like maybe a little swarming going on. Uh, and not only over here around around this area of Lake Yellowstone, but also around the Pitchstone uh, Pitchstone Plateau Plateau region Plateau. Oh man, flight flights! I've just been nonstop flying. A little bit of earthquake activity there. This is definitely um, microquake activity being well defined, picked up sharply and nicely. Uh, probably about 30 or 40 earthquakes there in that region, but uh, definitely microquake. So pay attention, folks, the next 24 hours. Watch Japan pretty closely uh, and watch the West Coast. It's just not happening. We haven't seen uh, a big enough earthquake out there to completely um, justify an, ease, an easement, if you will, of uh, that buildup of pressure that's, that's uh, been taking place out there along that section of the, uh, of the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire. So I do have... I do have uh, Japan kicked up here on the, uh, hold on a second here, on the seismograph station. I just added four stations, but I'm going to add uh, a couple more. I just wanted to get these up. Got Solomon Islands uh, station in Chile. Uh, 
Japan is the third one down. That's going to be the one to watch for uh, any significant movement in, uh, of course, Japan, right? And then I got a New Zealand station. But anyway, I'm going to get these fixed up. Uh, I need to get something to eat. There's a Japan station. I need to get something to eat, something to drink. And then we'll come back and uh, get here on the live stream and fix things up a little bit. So, all right, folks, I'm jumping off here. Uh, once again, 6.8 off the coast of Japan. Watching this for uh, more possible movement here. We'll chat you guys in a little bit.